Hello Internet, I am back from America and it's taken me a bit longer to get back than everyone else because me and the Birch Brothers went to uh, New York afterwards actually so we did the whole tourist thing and walked around quite a lot actually and uh, saw all of the sights but back in the UK now it was really really hot over there by the way <laughs> but back and uh, here to reflect on the World Championships so um, it was pretty good actually I enjoyed myself um, I had a day one invite um, I honestly you know and I think I said on the on the video before going out there that I wasn't too hopeful to you know make it through day one but as soon as we got there day one started and they said we were doing six rounds of Swiss so basically all we need to do was go four and two and you're basically through to day two so I thought right licking my lips you know rubbing my hands you know typical evil bad guy gestures and uh, I thought I can do this and <laughs> and um, I did basically so I'm just going to take you through um, you know my world run and the team I used and let's have a little bit of a look to um, you know uh, next year's format as well and all the information that we've got for that so far so we're sitting here you know just on showdown just so that you can see this team I'll go through it in detail um, <laughs> like I need to <laughs> um, a little bit later but basically you can see that I used this team again um, so you know Leipzig, Scizor, Brillum, Cresselia, Terrakion and Thunderous um, you know the team that I am you know known for more than any other probably and uh, it works I did say before going out that I didn't really have too much time to um, prepare you know pray play pra or pray maybe <laughs> uh, practice uh, test teams I made a few teams I didn't really like any but to be honest I don't think any team I could become as comfortable with as this one um, I did a few games with this beforehand and I actually did okay with it and uh, so I thought, you know, maybe this team is the, the you know, the, the best team for me going into it. As well, you know, a few other points, because I did do terribly with this team in the Nationals. And I do actually put half of that down to, um, well, one, uh, people being prepared for my team after I won the um, Arnhem Regional with it. Uh, but also, because I was just bored of using it. Like, I had used this team, like, obviously, most of 2013, and most of um, the VGC 15 format up until the Nationals as well, so I was sick of it. Every play I made felt like uh, I wasn't thinking about it, it was just what I thought was was best, you know, to do, just as an instinct kind of thing. So I wasn't playing it properly, I wasn't doing well with it, and uh, that, I suppose that kind of perpetuates itself into, uh, you know, the uh, the Nationals performances that I had, not doing very well with it, but um, I kind of put this team, this team for the side, uh, to the side rather, for a little while, and uh, came back to it just before Worlds, and I really liked it again. So, you know, as well as that, people were probably not thinking that I would use this team again at Worlds. And so, you know, maybe there might be a few less goggles, maybe there might be, you know, less lumberries, I don't know. People just wouldn't have this team in the forefront of their minds like they did at the Nationals. So, I did feel a bit safer using this team. Um, you know, obviously it does mean that I don't have to, you know, didn't have to uh, create a, a whole new team from scratch as well. I did have other options, but honestly I, I just didn't like them as much as this team. So, um, that's, you know, basically why. I mean, I, <laughs> I think I can say with some confidence I am the first person to ever use the same team in two different <laughs> world championships. <laughs> so, there's that going for me. I mean... I'm probably, I mean, no one used Mega Scizor at Worlds last year, unless anyone that I don't know about used Mega Scizor at Worlds this year. I am also the first person to ever use Mega Scizor at Worlds. Probably the, um, you know, the only to use Lyput as well, I don't think anyone used it last year. Um, not sure if anyone else used it this year, uh, day one or not, I'm not sure. Uh, also, I am one of the uh, few Westerners to actually uh, take Cresselia to Worlds, I think, as well. So, um, you know, quite a few interesting... Um, you know, little uh, little points to make with this team. Um, so, day one, go into the tournament, um, feeling, you know, okay about it, feeling like, yeah, you know, I've got a decent chance to, to go at least 4-2 in this little tournament. Um, my round one opponent was a, a fellow UK player who I have played quite a few times, and um, he has a good record against me, so I wasn't really liking that pairing, but, but I won, and um, I did quite well in, in day one. I went 4-2. Um, and managed to progress. I mean, I was really happy, really relieved, because I did get a little bit unlucky in a couple of my games, and, 
you know, the ones I lost, and <laughs> so I wasn't too happy about that. But um, I did en actually enjoy playing, you know, players from all over the world, even though this was just day one at Worlds. I played players from UK, um, United States, Canada, Mexico, Singapore, um, and Australia, actually, in day one. So I played, a, you know, a whole range of people. Um, in day two, I played people from uh, Japan and Korea as well as, um, you know, these other places too. So a real, you know, range of, of um, origins that I played. So I did day one. Uh, I've, got, oh, I've got a few pictures on here as well, actually. Um, this, oh, wrong pictures. There we go. This is, um, you know, the record of day one, basically. So here's the team I used, um, the items and everything. 9-5, um, which is reasonable, I suppose. Um, Got into. I'll go into. You know. I'll, I'll look at the team. I'll show you what I changed in the team um, in a little bit. Um, just showing you records and stuff right now. Day two, um, nine and nine, which <laughs> isn't that great. But uh, my final record for day two was four wins and three losses. So I'm really happy that I at least went positive with this team. Yeah, I'm really. I actually am pretty chuffed with that. Here's all of the uh, the world stuff that you get. Um, took a picture of this early today as well for. Um, uh, you know, being yeah, you know, for getting an invite to Worlds, basically you get all this. Um, apart from the extra shirt, I always buy the extra shirt, and they always compete in the uh, in the non-competitor shirt as well for some reason. Um, but yeah, this is all the the lovely stuff that we're given. Um, yeah, day two, I go um, four three. It started off pretty disastrously though for me. I actually lost my first three rounds in day two, so I started zero and three. I thought, wow, this is just not. <laughs> you know, not not what I wanted to happen. And all three of those games, I did feel like I was capable of winning them as well, which was annoying. Like, my first round opponent was Deflo, who was a, 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 a quite a well-known German player. He had a, a very standard-looking team with the Mega Gardevoir and Amoongus and Heatran and all the rest of it. Um, but his Gardevoir was actually timid, so uh, that really caught me off guard. And he, he had Encore on it as well, which was actually quite a nice little touch. Um, but that gave my team a lot of problems because, like, basically, you know, <laughs> not to go into it too much. Um, game one, I led with Lipe and Brilliant. He led with uh, Gardevoir and Landorus or something else. And uh, basically, I'm used to being able to spoil that Gardevoir, um, you know, before it Mega Evolves or as it Mega Evolves. Um, but, um, nope, he's faster and he knocked me out straight away. So <laughs> that wasn't very good. But, um,. His, uh, you know, his Landorus wasn't scarfed, and that doesn't really give me too much problems, and all the rest of it. So I felt like I, I could have won that game. The second game um, was against an American, uh, an American, I think. I can't remember who it was. I don't think it was anyone that I knew. Um, and um, game, I can't remember the game one, but the game two, I spored into um, a Goggles Cresselia, which I obviously hadn't seen in game one, so... Uh, that did not help, and I lost that one. Game three, uh, I played, I think he was Japanese. Um, either Japanese or Korean. No, I think he was Japanese, actually, because I played two Koreans after. Um, and he had, like, a rain team with Assault Vest Garchomp and all this kind of stuff. And um, it was actually a really close game between. Is it, like, it basically, on game three, it came down to um, if his Salamence hit himself in confusion or not with Swagger. Uh, and he didn't, which is unfortunate for me. Uh, obviously not for him. But, um, you know, it is what it is. I wasn't that annoyed losing that game. And so I'm sitting 0-3 thinking, well, you know, I've got to win every other game because there were seven rounds to actually just go positive. Round four, and I'm paired with uh, Paul Chua, who you probably know, probably heard of. He's uh, quite a well-known American player. Um, he's often on Cybertron's channel <laughs> playing him on Battlespot. And, uh, you know, it seems like he was 0-3 as well. Um, but I won that game. Um, you know, quite convincingly, I think. I don't think his team had been tested too much. I don't don't think it was too solid. Um, and then I think I played two more, um, uh, two Koreans in the next rounds, uh, five and six. And uh, I can't remember who my last opponent was, but um, yeah, where was he from? I can't remember. Um, but anyway, I won the rest of the of the games basically, and then I ended four three, which um, although it's not a brilliant record, like it is at least positive and. Um, it mean I, you know, went out on a high. Basically, I didn't want to lose my last game of Worlds. I didn't want to go negative. Being positive from being 0-3 down, I think, uh, shows, you know, pretty good amount of mental strength. <laughs> so um, that was that. Um, there we go. We've still got all these uh, pictures up. Um, we've got the results here as well. So um, 
Yeah, this is the uh, the final results. So obviously, uh, yeah, as everyone knows, the top cut was dominated by Japan. Uh, good friend Laya there. I mean, well done to uh, Laya for for top cutting in his first world appearance and um, in the seniors division as well. You know, well done to Mark. I mean, fantastic. Like, don't know if any senior has been as dominant as he has been at Worlds before. Going to the the Worlds final last year and uh, winning the tournament, becoming the senior world champion this year, uh, bringing, you know, a, uh, at least a uh, world title back home to the UK. So, you know, fantastic um, for both of you, you know, Lyo and Mark. But um, here we go. So here's um, all the 5-2s, 4-3s. So I was quite a low 4-3 because of my resistance, unfortunately. But, I mean, at least I'm sitting in the 4-3 bracket with quite a lot of, you know, good players. We've got Colin, Marcus, um, Sejun who um, did not top cut, he finished 4-3 as well. Um, Aaron, well-known YouTuber, obviously. <laughs> um, last year's senior world champion, Albi. Um, and uh, Sekim as well. I thought Sekim would do quite well. Um, he obviously did do quite well. I mean, let's look at the... Um, let's look at, just out of interest, let's have a look at the um, tie breaks. So Laya was on... 61% and ah oh, wow that's way above that if Sekim had just won one more game then he would have top cut so uh, that's pretty unfortunate for uh, for him but <laughs> that's Pokemon I suppose you got to win your games um, but yeah I mean I'm, I'm pretty happy with like 37th isn't that flattering to be honest I mean in the world maybe maybe it kind of is but um, I'm just happy I went positive 4-3 after going 0-3 is a, a pretty good finish I think so uh, let's just have a little bit, you know, a little bit of a look over the team, just so that you can see what I changed. Um, Lyput does not have swagger; it has fake tears now. Scizor is the same, Brillum's the same, Cresselia is the same, Drakion's the same. Rock Tomb did a lot of work at Worlds. Rock Tomb was brilliant. The amount of uh, wide guards that I Rock Tomb through to knock out a Charizard Y or something, yeah, <laughs> really happy with that. Thunderous. Um, I've basically made these EVs more basic. Um, I did have like a, a sort of half fancy kind of spread like this where I had like a sandstorm and a life orb, life orb number. That was the spread. Um, but the uh, these missing special attack EVs actually are um, of some note. So I basically put all of that back into special attack because uh, with the fake tiers, a Life Orb Thunderbolt with max special attack actually does have a good chance to knock out like uh, bulky Heatran and uh, maybe even like some Gardevoir, Mega Gardevoir. So there was, you know, some reason for, uh, you know, de-fancying my, my EV spread. And basically I put Swagger back on Thunderous as well. So I didn't lose Swagger because, uh, you know, Lyput obviously lost Swagger, but the team didn't lose Swagger. And Thunderous swapped Taunt for Swagger, so I lost Taunt basically in favour for Fake Tears. But um, I mean, it always—I don't know why I didn't do this sooner because it always felt a little bit awkward for me using Lyput and, and Thunderous like this, uh, like how they were uh, using them like this. It just became one of my favourite leads all over again because um, Lyput and Thunderous, I could basically have the option of using Swagger and hitting them with a, dark, a, a Black Glasses. Uh, you know, foul play, or I could hit them with a fake tears and a life orb thunderbolt. You know, either one of them has, you know, basically got a guaranteed knockout on one of their Pokemon. So I suppose it was quite predict heavy um, and a little bit risky, but that's, I suppose, how I like to play. Uh, but it, it, it made these two just so good. The amount of times um, I went into a game and just got two knockouts in the first two turns. And like they're trying to predict around like a hidden power or something, and I'm just using fake tears and thunderbolt on the on the partner, you know. So <laughs> um, I really loved this. Like it, it worked so well, and I still think this team works. I mean, clearly it does. You know, I went positive on day two on Worlds, so it clearly does still work. So didn't really change too much with the team, but it was just these little tweaks that um, made the team, you know, interesting to me again, and and maybe caught someone by surprise a couple of times. You know, just things like that can get you wins. And, um, yeah, I really I really enjoyed this team. Again, still. So, um, what are we doing then? So here's the results. Yeah, so this is actually the list of players that went through um, day one. Uh, you know, looking at this list, because, like, I think even... Um, I think even a few people dropped from the tournament as well, yeah. Um, 
looking at this list, aside from um, a large chunk of the Japanese players that progressed through day one, I think I'm one of the few people who actually went through day one that ended positive on day two. So I, I suppose I can take that away from, you know, from the whole experience as well. Um, what are we going to do then? Okay, so that's, yeah, so that's day one, that's day two. Um, that's the picture of all the stuff. Oh, this is, uh, this is one of my favorite pictures from the, uh, um, from the whole weekend, I suppose. There's, uh, me and, uh, Dwee under here, um, over here. Some very famous faces over <laughs> on this side. Um, there's the, uh, the Birch brothers, who I went to New York with. Um, Hoib, who is, uh, the Netherlands' first world's competitor. He went 3-3 on day one. Uh, Jamie, who was kind enough to let me stay in his room. Uh, Mark, who... You know, goes to uh, you know almost every <laughs> world. He's been to every world that I've been to. He's a UK player um, living far, far over in the east um, as a teacher, actually. Um, but uh, yeah, what a uh, what a brilliant experience it was. New York was really good as well. Um, and I've come back, and all of a sudden we've got all these announcements for the next season. Now we don't actually know what the format is going to be. Obviously, we can um, speculate. I mean, it might be, I think, I guess, really, there's three options. Either it is going to be exactly the same as this year, you know, maybe with one or two, you know, hidden abilities released or something, but, you know, basically the same as this season. Or I think it's going to be um, potentially the um, special ladder from Battlespot um, of this last, um, the last Battlespot season, which is basically, um, you know, as it as it has been, but minus the top 20 used Pokemon. So no Kangaskhan, no Charizard, no Gardevoir, no Amoongus, no Landorus, no Thunderous, no Cresselia, you know, no Bisharp, no Aegislash, you know, all of these really common Pokemon just taken out of the game. And uh, actually, I think that would be, you know, edging on being my, my preferred format for next year, because it would it would mean yeah, you've got to be a bit more creative with your teams. And actually, like if you've been like subscribed to my channel for a while and see the kind the kind of teams that I use, I actually don't tend to make teams with legends in them. Like obviously this team has got Cresselia and, and Terrakion and, and Thunderous in it. Um, but I don't tend to like you know, there's the uh, um Raichu Azumarill team, you know, that I've been using that had like well, there was different versions of it with, like, Aerodactyl in it and, um, you know, the Parasect team and all the rest of it. You know, there's all these teams that I just sort of tend to make without Legends in them, so I would be perfectly happy making a team under that format. Um, it would also... Well, I suppose it might be a little bit confusing for, for new players, like, oh, why can't I use this Pokémon? But, I mean, last year's format, the VGC 14 format, was confusing enough. You know, why, why can't I use this Pokémon that I caught in the Friends of Hari, etc.? Um, so I don't see that being an, an, an argument to, to not do that. So that would be good. And uh, the third option, basically, I think is, you know, go back to VGC 2010. Just let us use uh, Groudon and Kyogre and Rayquaza and Xerneas and Eveltal and, you know, or, um, Zygarde if you really want to use that. And, you know, all, all of the Pokemon like that. I think um, that would be quite interesting as well. I didn't play competitively in VGC um, 2010, so I would love a format like that. Um, also, I think Lyford would, would really appreciate that as well, <laughs> because like all of the all of the legends seem to be a little bit slower than Lyford, and they got these really big attack stats, and they can just smack them with a power play. <laughs> so uh, you know, either of these second options, like as long as it's not just like really stale and you know the same format as this year, I'm really happy and you know looking forward to uh, to the the next year basically. But also, um, we've got an idea on the points and uh, the structure of of the year. So, you know, there's going to be some regionals, obviously. Um, we're going to have some, you know, lots of Premier Challenges, hopefully. Um, nationals in Europe, the best finish limit for Nationals has gone to one, which is, here we go, which is big, actually, which means you're not, if you live in Europe, you are not obliged to travel to all of the National Championships, which is expensive, and I've done it three years in a row now. It's It's like not as fun as it used to be it is more of like a, a chore or a job almost going to the tournaments now so we don't have to do that which is fantastic you can just go to one national and as long as you do well then you've got a good chance of basically making it to world i think the championship points are um they've, they've all been tweaked a little bit but winning is still um 
600. It seems like in all of these tournaments, the, the winner of the tournament actually gets way more championship points than the rest, which is maybe a little bit, um, a little bit, um, I don't know what the word is, a bit harsh, I suppose, on, on someone that gets top four, because we can see the premier challenge is, if you win the tournament, you get 30 championship points. If you, you know, get third, like, you know, if you lose to the, the winner of the tournament, you get 12, which is reasonable, I suppose. Um, actually, no, that's, that, this is the extended Premier Challenges. This is, yeah, this is, like, because, you know, living in the UK, I don't think we're going to be getting um, whatever the, the kicker is. Yeah, 65 or more for a Premier Challenge. I don't think that's ever happened at a Premier Challenge in the UK. So all of our Premier Challenges are just going to be this. So, yeah, so, like I was saying, if you get third, you're getting a measly four championship points. Like, come on. Like, I don't agree with that, to be honest. I think that is very, very harsh. I do like the uh, sort of initiative to make it, um, like, only the really good players get the championship points and everything. But, like, there's every chance that you can just get a bit unlucky, maybe lose to the, you know, the person who wins the tournament. And you end up with four championship points. They end up with 30. So, I think that's a bit harsh. But, uh, interestingly as well, the... Um, best finish limit for Premier Challenges has been raised to six, but it has also been paired with online competitions, which you can actually get a, a decent chunk from as well. So depending on how many uh, Wi-Fi tournaments there will be, um, you know, maybe this is going to be the way to get your points, actually, you know, from a, you know, not necessarily going to the Premier Challenges. So not, not sure how much I, I agree with that, but, um, you know, I really don't, really don't agree with just the measly four for a, for a top four finish at a Premier Challenge. But um, it'll make make the scenes a bit more a bit more interesting, I suppose. Yeah, there's these mid-season showdowns as well, which I've not really read too much about. But uh, I can't really see how they differ too much from a regional because, like, it, it's paired with the regional with the the best finish limit of three, and you get less championship points. So, like, I don't know. I'm I'm shrugging my shoulders at that. I, I've no idea what it <laughs> what you know what's going on there. But um, I mean, it's going to be different, it's going to be interesting, um, you know, it seems like every year there's some changes, um, it, it, it makes it so the previous year I would have had a paid invite, you know, like in, in 2013 I was well inside the top 16 of Europe, but I didn't get a paid invite because I didn't finish top 4 in a national. You know, this year, um, VGC 15, I was first in Europe going into the nationals, um, but because there wasn't a, you know, best finish limit of 1, Everyone got lots more points than me at all of the three nationals, and I was basically kicked out of the top 16. So, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, maybe I am a bit of a, an unlucky player when it comes to this kind of stuff. But you know, it's it's uh, it's all fun at the end of the day, isn't it? So, um, I mean, basically, I think I've 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 talked over everything. I've looked over the team, looked over the results. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting to, to look at, really. I mean, there's a lot of good players that actually went negative. Um, you know, 3, 4, and, you know, worse, actually. So, I'm definitely, definitely glad that I I went I went positive, 4-3 at Worlds. It's not not bad, really. And, you know, I'm, I'm not in, in, in bad company in this bracket as well, am I? So, we've got some very good players here. So, um, thanks for, uh, you know watching this thanks for like coming up to me and, and talking to me at Worlds as well you know a few people did come up to me and uh, and uh, you know tell me that like you know even even from Peru like hello you Peruvian guys like my videos get to Peru that's that's crazy isn't it <laughs> so like it just again it, like the amount of times I've said this it just kind of you know brings it home to me that like this is like a, an international thing isn't it YouTube like you get to see my videos wherever you are in the world like if you want to see them, you know, obviously they're not forced into your your eyeballs. Um, but but um, like, just thanks for 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 watching. Thanks for for staying subscribed. Um, it does mean a lot to me. Like it, it's really quite humbling. Uh, I am still, you know, just throw this out there as well. Still, you know, on the search for a capture card. So if anyone has one, you know, they don't need that. I can maybe purchase off, or you know, maybe donate if you're feeling extra generous. Um, then you know, let me know. Um, because I, I do still want to make uh, YouTube videos. I want to make, you know, quite a few more videos, actually. I want to try and get into some kind of schedule or, or something, I don't know, because 
um, you know, Worlds is a whole year away now, so there's not really any stress on, you know, team scouting and, um, you know, nasty stuff like that, you know, pressure on doing well and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's, uh, you know, it'd be something to, uh, you know, you know, doing my own time as well. You know, I quite, quite enjoy making these videos. Um, the, the whole camera pointing at the DS thing is not the greatest of qualities, but uh, if I do do Battle Spot, then it will be that for the time being, unless I do get a capture card. Um, but, yeah, I mean, again, thanks for watching this, guys. Thanks for, uh, you know, being so friendly, everyone at Worlds. Worlds is always a, a, a brilliant experience. I mean, I think Worlds this year has been um, on par with uh, my Vancouver experience in 2013. I really enjoyed that. So, um, you know, thank you, the whole community, to all of you, um, you know, everyone. It's it's one of a, one of these wonderful things that I've kind of stumbled into doing this whole Pokemon thing and uh, don't really regret getting into it. So, thank you very much. And, um, you know, keep your, uh, your, um, your eyes tuned in on my channel, see if uh, I'm going to be uploading anything in the future. Hopefully I will be. So, thanks again and goodbye.